When I became leader of this party two and a half years ago, our party was $10.6 million in debt. And today, through the hard work and the generosity of Ontarians like you and the people who put this dinner together, the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party is debt-free and is now building its campaign fund. Tonight is our opportunity to demonstrate our pride in Ontario, in our diverse communities, in our economy that is still capable of so much and in our common faith that the past four years notwithstanding, Ontario has a very bright future indeed. And so tonight I want to talk about leadership. Leadership is more than comparing one person to another, though I will tell you I will put my track record up against Dalton McGuinty's any day. There's a common checklist for the qualities that we expect from our leaders. Leaders set an example. Leaders keep their word. Leaders are not afraid to make tough decisions. Leaders have a plan. Real leaders welcome accountability. By placing polls and politics ahead of the public interest, Dalton McGuinty has prevented all of us from working on a plan for a better Ontario. Like many of you, I have learned the important and sometimes hard lessons of leadership. And I am putting my name on the ballot because I want to put those lessons to work in building a better Ontario. Now, unlike 2003, Mr. McGinty now has a record. And you know what? The record's not good. The massive and regressive health tax, the abandoning of families of children with autism, the coal power plants fiasco, the financial crisis facing our cities and towns, the chaos in our hospital emergency rooms, the despair in Ontario's north, a series of scandals and record of cover-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, we will act very differently. We will act very differently. First of all, we would have begun this year in this budget to eliminate that regressive health tax. <laughs> Leadership is not about how you position for partisan advantage. It's about making decisions that make a difference for people and always keeping your eye on the results. For example, Mr. McGinty and I ask very different questions when we hear that a private clinic is willing to do knee replacements entirely at public expense, paid for with the OHIP card. I ask, are the principles of our single-payer OHIP system being respected? Will this help ease the backlog and provide quicker, more accessible care? I ask, will this make a difference to people waiting months and years in pain for those knee replacements? Mr. McGinty and his high-volume health minister, they ask whether there are cheap political points to score. And I can tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, I will embrace the kind of innovation, the kind of modernization, and the kind of change we need in order to get people better care faster. When it comes to Ontario's economy, Mr. McGinty and I again see entrepreneurs and investors and risk takers very differently. Well, I believe we have to earn investment in Ontario, and we have to earn investment staying here in Ontario, and that means respecting enterprise, and it means respecting the people who put their money and their ideas on the line. Those are the people who create jobs and opportunity for others. I reject milking these businesses. And ladies and gentlemen, real leadership also means showing resolve on one of the defining issues of our times, and that is the environment an independent officer of the legislature, he called his report neglecting our obligations. That's how he summarized the McGuinty government's records. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that neglect must stop. And with our plan, it will. And I can tell you right now, a John Tory progressive conservative government will set as our interim goal achieving the first 10% reduction of emissions below 1990 levels by 2020. We would have to turn back the clock to 1990 levels through innovation and through doing all kinds of different things, and that is a big task in and of itself. And then, once we had succeeded in doing that, we have to cut that by 10 percent by 2020. Based on our past performance, that would be a real achievement. 
So how will we get there? I'm already on the record as calling for the government of Ontario to lead the way in making Ontario a world leader in the energy efficiency of government buildings and workforce. It's got to happen. <laughs> Conservation by all of us will be a cornerstone of getting us to where we want to be. But it also means being smarter in the way that we generate energy. We have to remove the barriers to investment in new green generation technologies. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll say one more very important thing. For our environment, for our economy, for a secure energy supply and Ontario's future, we also have to get going on nuclear power as well. Ontario's nuclear power is safe, it is reliable, it is affordable, and it is greenhouse gas free. We must meaningfully advance the process for building new nuclear capacity right away. I believe that if we harness the innovation of enterprise, if we work in partnership with people who have the ideas they want to put to work, we can guarantee a cleaner, greener environment that will both strengthen job security and open up new opportunities for us here in the province of Ontario. We have to remember that here in Ontario, we both drive cars and we make cars. And so I will look at the challenge of meeting our obligations on climate change as both a responsibility and an opportunity. When I'm visiting a business and I hear the management and the people on the shop floor tell me that they're forced to spend more time on government paperwork than they do making their products, I know why I want to be Premier. When I'm on the farms and I have hard-working farmers look me in the eye and tell me there's no future in farming for their kids, I know why I want to be Premier. When I see a $36 billion health care system that is generations behind the basic use of technology that you use all day, every day to manage properly, I know that as Premier I can add real value. When I meet with the members of Ontario's diverse communities, our black communities and our Muslim communities and Asian communities and others, I see firsthand the talent and goodwill that exists in these communities. But when I see far too many of these good people and their kids still held back by misunderstanding or lack of access to opportunity, I know that I can make a real difference as Premier of this province. You know, I, I recently joined a group of friends who were raising money for the family of a child with autism. And they were raising that money so that that young couple could afford the treatment needed by their four-year-old son. And that these two young people were thinking of moving to Alberta because that government in that province will fund the same treatment for their child. I knew why I wanted to be Premier of this province. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time for a new beginning. A new beginning which puts investment and economic growth and social progress and fairness back at the center of our agenda. A new beginning which addresses for real our energy and environmental and health care challenges with the kind of can-do spirit that Ontario has always embodied. It's time for a government, ladies and gentlemen, that tells the truth, that trusts the people, and that has the common decency to mean what it says and only to promise what it can deliver and then to deliver on those promises. What amazes me, ladies and gentlemen, is that those aren't new rules. Those aren't rules that I had to invent. Those are the same rules that you live your lives by every single day, your family lives, your business lives. They're the same rules by which I did my job as a business and community leader, and those are the values that I would bring to the government of this province. We need new leadership. We need real leadership. We need a new premier and a new team who can and will make a real difference. Ladies and gentlemen, I am ready to make a difference as Premier. We're assembling, as you could see here tonight, a great team that will be able to make a difference for people. With your help, together, let's get started on building a better Ontario. Thank you very much.